Thanksgiving is mentioned, uh, how we should thank God. And, well, I was looking, for instance, here in Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagle. Isn't that beautiful? I like uh, all of that, but I was thinking especially of that part. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. I should like this morning to uh, entitle my thoughts, Memories. Memories. You have memories. I have memories. And it's a God-given, whatever you want to call it, not necessarily a talent, but everybody more or less is able to remember Although, you know, news is spreading rapidly about uh, Alzheimer's, a disease where your memory slips from you. And it's brought in the news so vividly recently when it was announced that former President Reagan is now uh, suffering from Alzheimer's. Uh, it's a progressive thing. And we have experienced it close hand because one of our missionaries uh, lost her her memory gradually, her name was Sister Stetson, a wonderful, wonderful woman uh, with so many talents, but as the years crept upon her, she started to forget this and that and that until there wasn't anything left. She knew no one. And it's very sad. So uh, remember to thank God for your memory. I should add here that uh, it's not uncommon to forget things. I don't think because you're forgetting me now and then that you've got Alzheimer's. Uh, don't let that uh, enter your mind that way because we all forget. Uh, like the fellow who couldn't find his glasses until he went to rub his head and there they were. Kind of pushed up, but there they were on, the, on his forehead. Well, we don't want to forget. Forget not, says the scripture. I was uh, looking through my memory over the last week here, and I hope as we talk this morning, you'll start the wheels turning in your memory. Uh, we have so much to think about and not to forget. I am standing here right now, and I, in my mind's eye, I can see the house where I grew up in New Jersey. It was uh, the last house on the street, a two-story house, uh, not all that big, really. There were uh, three rooms downstairs. There was a kitchen, of course, and then the dining room, and then we called it the parlor. Of course, there was restroom and that sort of thing, closets. But there were three main rooms, and upstairs, as you go up the steps, we had three bedrooms up there. And uh, my brother, Bob, who's only, well, a year younger, maybe between one and two years younger than I am, we had uh, for that middle bedroom for a long time. The two of us slept in there together as we were young children. And that, uh, I can remember it so well. I was on the outside of the double bed, my brother on the inside, and uh, I remember one night, for instance, that I... Uh, I got up to get a drink of water. I was thirsty, and I, I got up and got the drink of water, and I brought it back to bed. But in my climbing around, I spilt the water on my brother, on his face, and uh, he woke up from a dead sleep, you know, trying to figure out what happened. Those are memories. Don't let anybody steal happy memories from your youth. I uh, wrote quite a lot of them down here as they came to me. I remember uh, how we would take the bedspread, you know, and tie it to the top posts on the bed, and there we had a tent. 
Uh, this was a very nice tent, you know, with the bed spread up on the post, and uh, we'd crawl under there with rocks. There, I don't know how we ever found it out, but certain rocks there in New Jersey, if you hit them together, maybe all rocks do this, you hit them together, they spark. And certain rocks seem to spark more than others. So we two boys would carry these rocks to bed, I know it's to mom, of course, or dad, but we'd get in there and put this thing up there and get it all dark, and then we'd be sparking these rocks, and I don't know what it sounded like downstairs, but and we got uh, all kinds of sparks coming out of those rocks. And of course, if we got too noisy uh, running around the room, mom would holler, are you kids in bed? And we'd jump right in bed and holler, yes. That was a nice system we had worked out there. Uh, we had an attic, too. And it was a hole in the, uh, you know, up above the second floor, uh, going up to attic area. And the only way to get up there was a ladder. And that's the place where Mom and Dad would hide all the Christmas presents so we wouldn't find them or see them. And uh, uh, we'd always be watching and listening for Dad to come up the steps after we were in bed and make his way up there with a ladder and, and uh, either bring down or put up presents. Uh, that was exciting. And then for heat, uh, we did have uh, radiators, but there was also a heater that would, uh, was in the floor uh, and it wasn't an automatic heat or anything, it was just an opening with, uh, oh, some kind of uh, stuff on it so you wouldn't fall in. But uh, uh, the hot air from the kitchen would come up and warm the room. And we, at Christmas time especially, we'd have our ears glued to that hole down there on the floor, trying to find out what we were going to get for Christmas. Now, does this bring any memories to any of you? I'm going to have you come up here after a while and... Uh, if you will, and tell us some of your memories. Memories that are so nice that way. Uh, did you ever make homemade ice cream? Oh, have you never had that memory? Well, in the wintertime there in New Jersey, when things would freeze over, and they surely did, we'd go down to the meadows. The air ice would be maybe four or five inches thick. We'd go down there with an axe and a burlap bag, and we'd chop the ice off the lake and chop it off into big chunks, put it in a burlap bag, bring it up the house, and then break it to, to small little pieces. Uh, we had to get out then the hand crank ice cream, crank, you know, on that freezer, uh, mix it up, put it in there, and the turn six quarts at a time. And often we'd do two of those six quarters. Uh, homemade ice cream. Turn it, you work up the appetite while you're turning it, and uh, then you sit on the radiator, at least my brother would, while he ate. But uh, memories, you have them, I'm sure. I'm giving you some of mine this morning to uh, quicken your memory. I also remember uh, what Dad would do with our dog. We had this nice dog, strong muscles. He was a mongrel, of course. I have no idea uh, what uh, nationality he was. He was all black except for the paws of his feet, they were white. Uh, but uh, we loved that dog, and that dog loved us. And Dad, in the wintertime, he made a harness. I remember it so well. He got leather straps, and he fixed a nice harness like he would fix for a horse. And uh, then he brought the reins back to where we could sit on our sled and, uh, and have, have, the, have the dog pull us. It was, uh, it was very good. We had a little time getting the dog to, to, you know, go on his own. So one of the children, one of us, Bob or myself, uh, we'd have to uh, get in front and coax him. And then the other one. Then we came up with this idea. We got this long stick. Got the long stick, and then we uh, would get an apple. Our dog really went for apples. Did your dog ever go for apples? Well, our dog went for apples. Uh, this happens to be a pair. Didn't find any apples around the house this morning. Uh, but anyway, we would slip these up and uh, just cut them in uh, squares, you know, uh, so that the dog would really see what it was. And he knew how well it tasted. 
And then you take this apple and stick it on the end of a stick, like so, about three feet long, and you lay on a, lay on a sled and hold this out in front of the dog about a foot from his uh, nose, and he'd go for the apple. He'd go for the apple and he'd pull us on the sled. If we put the apple over this way, he'd turn to the right. If we put the apple over here, he'd turn to the left. And we were just like little kids, you know. Uh, that was the greatest excitement to have that dog pull us on the sled. And, of course, he enjoyed it immensely. And after we got a certain distance, well, we would, we would give him the apple to eat. Memories. Never forget the memories that... Uh, You've had down through the years. Uh, another memory that uh, is always a fascination to me uh, was going to Pennsylvania to my our grandparents. We both sets of grandparents lived in Pennsylvania. Uh, the one grandparent was uh, down toward the river, and uh, he always granddad always had a couple of rowboats in the river there, uh, and in the fields between. Grandpa's house and the river uh, were a couple cornfields. And out in those cornfields, if you went after rain, you could hunt for Indian arrows. Indian arrows. And we'd go down there in the fields, and my uh, uncle would go there more often because he lived right up in there. But here they would find these Indian arrows. And I've got, you know, a dozen of them here in a box. Uh, if only these arrowheads could talk. The sticks, of course, uh, the uh, whip part is long gone, disappeared. But here are the arrows, and uh, in those cornfields, they to find them. I looked a few times, all I found was a couple broken ones. But my uncle, he found lots of them, and, and when he passed away, his son got these arrows to us because he knew we had a school. Uh, in addition to the arrows, we have these little things for skinning the skin off of the deer or the rabbit or whatever. Uh, they'd eat the meat, of course, and use the hide and the skin uh, for clothing and that sort of thing. But if only these arrows could talk, what would they say? These points here, you know. Arrowheads is the real name for this part. But my, oh my. I've, in my mind's eye, I thought of those Indians living down there uh, along, along the river and how they must have uh, worked and hunted and sometimes fought each other. But here's a, uh, I hope you'll come up and see these later. I pick them up and feel them, I touch them because these are not from Knott's Berry Farm. These are the real Tomacoy from the cornfields of Pennsylvania where those Indians used to live and work along the Delaware River. Yes, right along the river. Well, I am giving you just my thoughts of memories. And before we stop, you must come up and have some of yours that you'll tell us about. Uh, we talked about the ice cream. And one of the funny things, we were sitting around the table. Our sister had just been born. Her name is uh, Ruth. But uh, before she was named Ruth, uh, Dad got the three of us boys around the table. Mom's still in the hospital, uh, having born the baby. And Dad said, what should we uh, name uh, this little baby girl? And all of us, you know, chimed in a few names. But my brother came out with a name that, that's gone from me. I'll have to ask him what it was. Susie or Daisy or some odd. What's that? Betsy, that's it. My wife remembers these things, even though she wasn't there. Um, <laughs> Betsy is the name. And I remember Dad saying, well, why do you want Betsy? Well, he says, up at school, and there's a horse that pulls a manure wagon. And it's a lovely horse. Bob used to like to ride with old Mr. Nick on that wagon, regardless of what he was hauling, uh, because he liked horses. And so he was all set to name our sister after uh, after this horse. Well, Dad kind of outruled that, and we came up with the name Ruth, which was all right, too. Memories, do you have them? I know you must have them. Never forget them. They're God-given. Anybody ever canned corn? Uh, almost a thing of the past, huh? You freeze things nowadays. 
And uh, that's good, of course. That's very good. But we would buy corn by the hundred years at a time. And then we gather around the kitchen and uh, take all this corn. After it was cooked, we take all this corn. I guess it was cooked. I'm not sure. Anyway, we've got to take it all off the husk and put it in jars, pork jars. Then they put it in this big cooker and cook it. And uh, all went along, you'd have corn and string beans and tomatoes and all of these goodies. And uh, the pears, we had two or three pear trees out there, but refrigeration wasn't much in those days. Dad had a way of preserving these down in the cellar and covering them so they wouldn't get frozen. But through the year then, we had uh, nice pears from our own pear trees. Aren't they good memories? I know you must have them. One of the ones I told you about more than once, I think, was the lady who used to come to our house. She would come from the church because mother had, uh, you know, these three children coming up so rapidly, four of us all together, uh, three boys and a girl, uh, growing so rapidly that uh, mom couldn't seem to get all the work done. And she said, I'll come and help you sew. And here she would uh, be working at the sewing machine, and I came over my head just reaching the, the top of the, the uh, platform for the sewing machine, and I'd watch what she was doing, and while doing that, she taught me how to pray. She taught me how to pray while she sewed. Now, that's one of the really big treasures I have of thoughts, how people, uh, especially this lady, and I hope we're all that way, we take time to work with children, time to talk to them. And, and in this case, she taught me how to pray. I thought it was, I look back now, what a precious thing it was for that lady to take the time to uh, teach a little toehead boy how to pray. Well, those are memories, and I pass them on to you. I have more that I could mention, but you know, this should start the memory thoughts in your own mind now, and I've got to reverse things a bit here and ask you if you would like to come up to the microphone and uh, give us a memory. Give us a memory. Something that you should pass on to your children, and something you should go over once in a while in your own mind. Now, I know if I just told you to stand up where you are, you'd do that easily enough, but uh, Harv has a tape recording here, and he'd like to have your memory put on the tape. All right, we'll start with you, Albert. I know you're looking around at Harv, and others of you are looking at each other, but let's have a memory, maybe two memories. What comes back to you? We have our minds yet, and we can still think, and let's develop the memories. Well, when you started off this morning, you, you were mentioning um, Alzheimer's disease, and, and at Thanksgiving time, the, the reason it, it, it struck a, a chord here is our family on Thanksgiving would always spend it with my dad's side of the family, my grandparents on my dad's side of the family. And my grandmother, she has Alzheimer's disease now, and, and she also has Parkinson's. So in a sense, that, that may be something of a blessing because the Parkinson's, you don't move around, and, and so she doesn't wander around or something like people with Alzheimer's. But it's very difficult for her, and, and she's certainly a shadow of herself. But, but the reason I thought of that is when I was a kid, when we were growing up, we always spent Thanksgiving with my dad's side of the family. And uh, we would often go out to dinner, but... Uh, I remember a few years, uh, she cooked Thanksgiving dinner for us, and, and people, when they think of Thanksgiving dinner, they always think of turkey and stuffing and mashed potatoes and, and all that, those goodies, and I never really liked stuffing. I, I would never eat it, but um, the, the first time we went, she cooked dinner, I ate it, and, and I learned to like it, so I, I suppose that's a memory that I'll, I'll always have from her, is she made stuffing that I like. In fact, I don't eat that much of it even now. I guess it was just hers that I liked, but, but that's a nice memory, and and, and Alzheimer's is, is certainly a, it, well, it's a terrible disease, I'm sure, for the people who have it, as well as for the people who are surrounded by it, because, as I say, that people eventually, as it gets worse, become a shadow of, of themselves. 
So that's a memory I'll always have of Thanksgiving. Not a Thanksgiving goes by that I don't think of that. Um, but that's, that's what we learned as, as children. Today in our Sunday school class, we were talking, the lesson was on how to teach children, and one of the things that was included in there is building memorials. One of the, the principles that was there is that no matter what you give your children materially, they're not going to remember all the gifts growing up, but they are going to remember the memorials and the things that you do together as a family, whether it's a Thanksgiving tradition, a Christmas tradition, a weekly tradition, what have you. Those are the things that children remember. And I think as we look back on our own childhood, those are the things that we remember with our families. So, so building these memorials and these memories, like Mr. Kruber's talking about, I think are very important to all of us. Very good. It's so true. Memories. Thank you very much. Who's next here? Uh, don't all come up at once, but uh, let's have you all come up here that will. Uh, well, I'm looking out there. Al, you got any memories? Oh, see there, he's just waiting for the invitation. I was thinking like you You're said. You're a New Yorker, are you? Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking what you were saying about Christmas. My father used to hide those presents. We used to wait all night till we hit him. Yeah. And then when, when it used to snow, my father told me about that and cleaned the driveway because his truck out in the morning. Yeah. Because that killed that snow for about three hours in the cold. Ooh. And then I go in and go to sleep, and next morning he wake up and say, you didn't, and I tell you to clean that snow up? It snowed overnight, and it was more fish. <laughs> he was just kidding me, you know, he said, yeah. He said to me, did I tell you to show that snow last night? I looked out the window, and it was three times more than it snowed overnight. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's not what I thought it was. Yeah. 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 It out well, yeah. 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 Well, that's never easy. Don't lose these things. Yeah. Sister Cabrera, come on now. How about a memory? Yo, these ladies are packed with memories. Yeah, good. Here she comes up this way. Were you born in California? No. You were not born in California. No. Let's hear a memory from somewhere. All right, here she is. Oh. Um, I think my, one of my favorite memories is um, as a child, every year during summer vacation, we would take a trip down to Texas, and then from Texas we would go down to Monterey, Mexico. But for weeks before we left, it was a big commotion as far as planning and taking things and, and packing. But once we got there, I have about over a hundred cousins. And it was during the summer we would have kind of a reunion. And getting together with my cousins on this ranch was just a lot of fun. There was something like it wasn't a lake, I guess it was a, a swimming hole we would do, and there were horses, and there were chickens we would chase, and, and there were things that we weren't supposed to do, and when we saw the bull, we'd start running clear across the field, and it was a lot of fun, and um, we stopped doing it when, I think, uh, in junior high school or so, but I still have those memories, and I think my cousins are still waiting for the day that I take my kids down there with their kids, and... Uh, Maybe we can make one of those trips, but they can get to experience that. Oh, I hope so. I hope so. I get it. Yeah, I hope you could repeat something like that. That's great. I remember we visited uh, our uh, uncle who had a farm in Pennsylvania, and when they went out to get the cows, uh, my cousin, he took me along, I got the idea I'd try to ride one of those cows. And I can remember trying to get on that great big old fat cow. <laughs> hey, memories, come on now, who's next? Mrs. Krimmery, you're just sitting there, kind of relaxed. We have a picture of her and her brother when they were, oh, should have brought it down here, only a few years old, sitting in the wagon. One of his little wagon. Two of you sitting in the same wagon. You don't remember that incident. Well, you may remember something else. Would you like to come and uh, give us a thought from memory? Nothing special comes to your mind. Well, some memories are uh, good, and of course, some are sad. She lost her her uh, father, you know, and uh, he went to work and never came back, sort of thing. Those are sad memories, but. 
And thank God for the, the good memories too. Harv, how about yours? Well, you've got a memory there? Yeah. Lots of them, I would imagine. All right. You are a California fellow, aren't you? Yeah. All right. When I was a kid uh, in the early, late 70s, we would always gather all the family up in this, this grand Torino station wagon. It was basically a death trap today. No seatbelts in it or anything, right? All the kids would be in the back, the way back, no seatbelts, and we would drive to Yuma every Thanksgiving. It was really great because that was my dad was home. You know, he always worked. Got to see him on Thanksgiving. So. And I remember my mom always bought us Archie comic books to keep us content in the car so we wouldn't fight. Of course we did anyway, you know, we fought over, fought over the comic books, but we get there, they had four kids, uh, I was the oldest of four kids in our family at the time, so all eight of us would sleep in sleeping bags in the living room floor, and nobody ever got any sleep all weekend, because we were just joking around and everything, but it was great, the family got together and everything, and uh, the thing I remember though going there was the salt and sea, how it goes like this as you're driving anybody in by the salt and sea, everybody got sick at that part, you know, it's great, so we just had a good time, and uh, there, my cousin's grandmother always made potato pancakes. They were so good. <laughs> I never heard of them before until she made them. I've never, no, I've never seen anybody make them since that. They were, they were real good. That's all. Potato pancakes. Yeah. My goodness. We we'll have to revise that sort of revive that tradition some way. Potato pancakes. That sounds good. How about over here, Billy Torres? Any memories here? All right, here comes Billy Torres. Born in Colombia, Ecuador. Okay, I knew it was over there somewhere. Memory, yes. Well, I remember. I want to like to pass to the first Thanksgiving day with the family. Yeah. Uh, when I recognized my wife. <laughs> Uh, she made to the dinner for Thanksgiving Day. This is the first day when I got to the house. Yeah. The first time I went to, to the family. Uh -huh. And she made to the good dinner. She made a good dinner? A good dinner for Thanksgiving Day. How uh, old was she? Except to the bread. It's the bird. Oh, she. The bird? The bread? Yeah, the, the bird. bird. The bird. The bread. The bread. Uh -huh. And she forgot the name. She forgot. You know, all right? Yeah. It's super. Well, you really bird, huh? Yes. <laughs> I can uh, see her twisting her head up there with a smile on. <laughs> yeah. And the rest of the family don't eat the bread. They would eat it. They say, this is perfect. Yeah. I'm taking the bread, I'm saying. You ate it. Oh, I'm eating it. You probably said, this is good bread. <laughs> this is just like my wife said that. <laughs> oh, what a great memory, huh? Thank you. Come on now. Who, who's ready to come up here? Mr. Ferris? Get the way back there, comfortable with your daughter. Come on, here it comes. Sure. Yes. Well, back to childhood memories, pre marriage memories, whatever, like Billy Torres here. Very good. Uh, one Thanksgiving memory I have that uh, I don't know if I was very fond of was uh, when we were kids. Uh, normally, everybody's used to having a turkey for uh, Thanksgiving. Um, that one time, uh, it must have been about eight years old at the time. Somebody came door to door, door to door in our neighborhood, and they were selling geese. You know, the goose, oh, yeah. and there'd be a live one. And ah. that was the first time they were going through the neighborhood doing that. So I guess he must have been a good salesman because he sold a, a lot of these uh, geese to, to uh, the people in the neighborhood. Well, the way he did is that he came by in the morning and he brought the goose, and he, you know, you paid them there, and then he left the goose there at the house, but it was alive running around. And then he'd come back later in the afternoon to to kill it for you, so that you could prepare it. Well, what happens is, you know, he brought the, the goose over, and as kids, so what are you going to do? You're going to start playing with the goose. So we were playing with the goose in the yard for about two hours, running around, and this kind of thing, throwing bread from it. And uh, we had a lot of fun with the goose. Well, later, he came by, and he killed it. And, you know, he threw a sack in it, and cut the neck off, and, you know, bled it, and the whole yeah. thing. And we sort of, like, saw that. So then when they prepared the goose for, uh, my mother took all the feathers off and the whole thing, and they prepared the goose, there it was, a nice big goose sitting on a table. And all of us just sat there looking at the <laughs> That's the first time I think nobody ate any of it. So that, we could just couldn't eat the goose because you had played with it, and we just sat there watching it. I think the time I had uh, stuffing and mashed potatoes and no meat at that time because uh, I couldn't eat the goose, and everybody, uh, my brother and sister, just watched it too. And that was the first and last time we had goose. After that, we went back to Turkey. It's so much nicer when it's 
prepared. Um, the other memory I have um, is around Christmas time. Traditionally for Mexican families, they, they make tamales at, at Christmas. And uh, if you've never done it, it's quite a, a very intensive procedure to make a tamale. Because you never make, you know, a dozen. It's always 10, 15, 40 dozen. And there's a lot of work involved in that. And my fond memories are of getting up early in the morning, um, like say before Christmas Eve, 5, 5, uh, 30 in the morning, getting up with my mom. And uh, I'd have her make the coffee, and then I'd make chocolate for my brothers and sisters. And my job was to clean uh, what's called the whole husk. is actually the, the corn husk that you put the tamales. And that was a job where, you know, I filled the sink up with, with warm water, and I'd wash them and take out the little, uh, the little hair-like things that go with, you know, the corn. Yes. Yeah, those things. And, and I had to clean that. Clean the whole husk was my job. But I remember doing that, and it being very um, traditional kind of thing, because I always did that all the time, and I prepared them, got them ready. My sisters would then uh, put the masa on, on the leaves, on, well, First of all, my mother would make the masa, which was a uh, labor intensive because uh, she made it from scratch, uh, mixing it so that it, it, uh, it floated properly and that kind of thing. And my sisters would roll them and then would put the chili in thing. Anyway, the process took like you know, four or five hours, sometimes six hours to make uh, quite a few tamales. But it was a traditional thing that we got up and we did. And that's one of the fond memories that I have. Well, those are delightful memories. And, uh, Tamales are certainly good, right? I know there's a lot of work involved there, but they certainly are good. Well, we thank you for these wonderful memories. And uh, I know we could go on and on here because all of you have such good memories, but I guess time is pretty well running out. Uh, in closing, let us turn to the hymns for the family of God. Uh, we'll turn to 363, To God Be the Glory. That's a nice song to uh, close with. All of our memories like this are due to God's great love to us. 363 in closing, To God Be the Glory. of thanksgiving for the blessings that you've given for the memories that we hold father may we never forget you and your great love to us now dismiss us with your blessing in jesus name amen